As an American writer, I know that the only way to make it off the farm is through some sort of peripheral connection, a self-inflicted portal of mundane commonality with the dwindling American public who still read. This has become most difficult indeed, because achievement, validation, and acceptance is illusion, and a huge disservice to the evolution of the mind any more. An enigmatic standard and goal whose fruits only serve to poison the mind as it further perpetuates the current state of posh neurotica. It is true that literature may still serve the purpose of provoking thought, but the future of such fundamental purpose seems bleak at best, considering that the most consequential efforts to elevate man from the dreary normality of twentieth and early twenty-first century life seems to come from sporadic, unorganized, underground thinkers who will, for lack of money, and in accordance with the shamelessly opaque social interests of contemporary America, be forced to take a back seat to best-selling works of intellectual impotence, such as romance novels and cookbooks. Seems Shakespeare and Wilde are fastly being replaced by Collins and Winfrey. Such acts of cultural castration are by no means confined to the purveyor of words, mind you, but to art in general, regardless of medium. The best writers, painters, musicians, filmmakers, and actors are hardly the keystone idols of the bourgeois Manhattan and Paris elitist social circles, who self-promote sanctuary egos while sipping champagne and eating caviar. Whether they are the busboy, the cab driver, the convict, and lunatic whose real-life lessons of struggle and suffering evoke beatific and poetic icons which convey the universal transitoriness of existence. They can be found in government institutions and their gutters all across this land. I have yet to travel abroad, being that I'm not a suave elitist born or married into money. But I do know about the U.S. from what I have seen and experienced by hitting the road with little food, money, or shelter in search of some sort of truth. And I can tell you this. You can go from state institution to state institution, from sea to shining sea, from Canada to Mexico, and find the world's next Rimbaud or Poe, Van Gogh or Dali, Liberace or Lenin, Fellini or Kubrick, Nicholson or O'Toole. But what is America presently turning out is conventional pop culture for all the world to worship. Thinly veiled pretentious wonder dolls who act as anesthesiologists, shitting perfumed turds out of diamond encrusted assholes in an attempt to reaffirm the delusional notion that by purchased association the escapist consumer's own shit does not stink. But of course it does, always has and always will. There is no self-serving purpose underlying a truth so profound that everyone is an artist, and everything a work of art, some better, some worse, some more passionate, while others go on too jaded to give a fuck anymore. Some dip their pens and brushes to great beautiful works of fantasy, while others regurgitate the vile veracities of the human condition. After all, it is your mindful reaction that validates my medium, as well as your illusions of self-gratification via your own karmatic plunder. It is of utmost importance that we help each other think. It is of utmost importance that we help each other and think. It is often the little things in life, the idiosyncrasies propelling our demise, instigated by the teachers, preachers, and parents, who took every measure to bury their children underneath molesting bodies of hypocritical dogma, engendering the current stasis of posh neurotica.